Chapter 25 Understanding the Heart of United Prayer Embracing True Prayer Revival For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show Himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward Him. 2 Chronicles 16.19 A few summers ago, our Army Ministries prayer team was asked to hold a prayer room on the campus of the Adventist University of the Philippines. Here, for a number of days, we did little more than pray with students and faculty. While the hours were long, it was very rewarding as our team watched the lives of lukewarm Christian young people being revived, energized, and transformed. Many who had never before been interested in spiritual things gave their lives to Christ and were decidedly changed and many of the young people would stay in the prayer room for hours. One day, a girl named Kristen, compelled by the invitations of a friend, came to see what was so special about this time of united prayer. Kristen had never prayed with others before and didn't really have a close relationship with God. But compelled by the Holy Spirit, she began to weep as she prayed with our team, asking God to forgive her of her sins and to give her a new heart. Afterward, she told us with tears in her eyes, God has given me such peace like I've never experienced before. Thank you for praying with me. Then she continued, This may sound strange, but during the united prayer, I saw a circle of evil angels trying to break into our prayer circle to stop the praying, but they could not get into our circle, for holding them back was a stronger circle of angels of light. She paused. I can see that God is really with you and protecting you all as you pray. While seeing angels is not the norm for our prayer circles, we know that as Bible-believing Christians, we are engaged in a very real spiritual battle between the powers of darkness and the power of light. For some reason, God allowed Kristen to catch a glimpse of this battle to remind us of the seriousness of our work and to encourage us to press forward in prayer. As Psalms 34 verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. What an amazing promise, and what a gift to see in this reality. As I have traveled around the world the last few years, speaking about the power of prayer, and encouraging churches to unite in prayer, I have seen miracle after miracle as God's Spirit has been poured out, bringing indifferent Laodiceans back to life. I've seen small united prayer groups springing up everywhere. However, the enemy is not happy and has gone to great lengths to shut down or otherwise hinder the work, for we know that prayer, especially united prayer, is the most hurtful weapon against his forces. Surprisingly, some of those who have tried to stop the United Prayer Movement are actually fellow believers, believers who are afraid of being swept up in a counterfeit revival. While I think these believers are sincere in their motives, I know the Holy Spirit has been grieved at how the genuine prayer revival has been held back by their words and actions. This is why we need to press together in even more prayer that God's genuine prayer movement would not be held back, even by friendly fire. There is need of a strong and united influence to cooperate with the captain of our salvation in taking the spoil from the power of the enemy and making men and women free in Christ. Shall we not everyone seek to stimulate others to work for fallen man? Pray earnestly, unitedly, perseveringly for spiritual power. The fountain of grace and knowledge is ever flowing. It is inexhaustible. It is from this abundant fullness that we are supplied. When we pray together, we aren't just doubling the power, for God works in the business of multiplication, not addition. When we pray together, we can claim God's promise that if we are filled with His power and standing upon His rock, one of us can chase a thousand, and two can put ten thousand to flight. Deuteronomy 32, 30. Another passage tells us, And five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. Leviticus 26, verse 8. While there's a lot of power in secret prayer, there's even more power when two or more are praying together.
This is why Satan is so keen on keeping us from praying together. This is also why I think we need to briefly address a few issues. If we don't understand the heart of genuine, biblically-based united prayer, it is possible that we could be swept away with a counterfeit prayer movement, or worse still, hinder a genuine prayer movement. We don't want either.